Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric here today in Loveland. I uh, want to talk to you today about welders. Um, had a job here that we connected with a customer on. Um, I've had some experience with welders, but not enough. And uh, this was kind of neat, so we took the time. Um, and I want to kind of walk you through what I had to do in order to see, because if you go in the code book and you're looking under Article 630 under welders, it's one and a half page and it doesn't say much and in fact on 630.12 when it talks about uh, your current rating and, and impacity and it has this I max and IUF max you know a lot of its gibberish and in my opinion a little bit of bullshit really what you want to look at is how the machine is operating um, so what we did is a step-by-step -step to look at what he did and I'm going to show you kind of what I did um, I'm not saying I'm right, so if you other YouTubers on there and the other electricians are really more professional with welders, I'm open to your input. Uh, if you're going to be a hack and a jerk, don't even look at my YouTube. So anyways, let me walk you through what I've done. Um, basically, the first step I did is I went under 240.4G. I'm in the 2014 handbook NEC NFPA 70 for National Electric Code. 240 is under overcurrent protection. Talks about protection for flexible cords and flexible cables and fixture wires. Your impacities, which will throw you into 400.5, I'll show you. Talks about your branch circuit overcurrent protection in 240. And then supplying your cords. Well, the cord that we were dealing with is actually going to be a 10.3. And so they don't even have a rating for it because the highest they go is a 12 gauge at 50 amp. And I'll show you on this welder how he has a 12 gauge, but yet it's rated up to 50 amp. And um, basically, the other thing you're going to look at is what size are your breakers, 240.6. We are throwing in a 60 amp. I probably could go to a 70 amp, and I'll show you that in a minute. But 60 amp is a good, a good medium that we found. And over here, we know that we're in the right section because this is an electric welder circuit conductors on 630.12 630 and 32. First thing I want to do is I want to go over to here under 310.15. And it says right here, and it doesn't, this is an SO cord, but let's assume that it's somewhere between the 75 to 90 degrees Celsius column. We would be somewhere around 35 to 40 amps on this wire. Okay, this is just assuming for a copper normal THHN. And I actually do have that in, and I'll show you that in a little bit, but I'm good up to roughly starting at 75 amps. To 65 amps to 55 amps. Well, my breaker is my weakest link. Talks about that in Article 110.14. So 110.14 talks about your term temperature limitations. Okay, and it's going to be page 34 in your handbook. But it also talks about in terminal splices that's your weakest link. Now, where this is exempt in the code because we have one provision that talks about our cords. So our cord on this one is an SO, and I'll show you that in a minute, okay? And it says it's a 10 gauge, and it rates it at 30 amps. In the B column, because the B column says it's two conductors, I have a ground and two hots. My ground is not current carrying, only if it faults. So I'm in the B column. They're saying around 30 amps. Well, I'm going to prove to you that truly that cord did a whole lot more than that. Okay, the other thing that we got to look at is that our cord for SO, this is 400.4, and we're going to go to SO. It is a hard surface cord. This is page 406. Two wires or more which I have a ground and two hots for a welder, 240 volt, single phase at a home. This is a damp location, and it's an extra hard usage. If I had a W on it, it could be for a wet location, assuming that my plugs were good too. Now this cord I'm going to show you, he's got to roll this up every night when he's done because he can't leave it outside. Okay, so the other code provision that we're looking at is under 630.
630 under arc welders. Okay, page 827. And then this is what your, your welder needs to have. If they're getting at a Home Depot, big box store, Jack's, wherever, make sure they have this listing on here. We're looking for a name of manufacturer, frequency, number of phases, voltage, I max current, I left current, maximum open circuit voltage, rated circuit current, and your basis of rating of cycle duty. Okay, there is an example in here. I'm going to read through and just check everything. This is under group welders or individual. We're dealing with an individual welder at a home by itself. Okay. And then the other thing it talked about in 300.12 was it's right here, the overcurrent protection and its formula. I'm going to read through that here, not right now on the video, but later. So we are looking at Article 110, 14. We're looking at 240.4G, 24046 which is going to talk about our breaker ampacities to our wire, our ampacity of um, protection through that wire, as well as 400 and what that cord is rated, what it's listed as, and the arc welder, putting all this together to go from a breaker to a welder. So where's what I want to show you. The other thing we also considered was one other thing. This is our voltage drop formula. How you will find your voltage drop formula is 2K, which is like two kids, times amperage D for distance, circular mill, and your, equals your voltage drop. So two is your constant. You have three wires in a cord. You're gonna have a black and a red, in this case, a black and a white. And we did phase our white in that cord with a red piece of tape, because uh, chapter 200 and under, under identifications for neutrals says that you have to identify that white as a red. And I can't show you that because it's all bundled up, but I did identify that. So anyways, you got your hot, your black, and your red, which is your two conductor, your K for your constant. Just so I can write this in while you're on the YouTube. Aluminum equals 21.2 and copper equals 12.2 for your formula. Okay. So in this case, for this customer, it was two for two wire times copper, 12.2 times your amperage well that was going to go at an average of 60 amps times your distance and we did do it at 50 volts and realized we didn't like the voltage drop on a 50 volt cord so we did it at 25 volts or 25 feet sorry divide that out by your circular mill which is going to be table 8 chapter 9 let's travel there page 1075 we have a 10 gauge, we're in a circular mill, and we're at 10 zero, or excuse me, 10 380 is our, our um, circular mill, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, uh, basically the resistance for that number 10 gauge stranded, okay, so we're going to go on to our calculator, we want to figure out our voltage drop, and see if it matches what I found in the field, 2, times 12.2 times 60 amps when he's welding times 25 feet 36,630 resistance assuming that's about resistance with your wire size excuse me resistance with the amperage and then divide that out by circular mills at 10 380 oops we should have about a 4 volt drop you round up four volts of drop three to four okay divide that by 245 volts because I checked the pressure at the panel not assuming I checked it that's only one and a half percent voltage drop okay so here's what I found in the field walk with me now I have a fluke meter that's an I 2500 and this is a very expensive meter. It detaches. I can walk around with it up to about 50 foot as an RF signal. This is telling me how much current, because I have a lead right here, that I am consuming on one of the phases, while at the same time I'm using my voltage as my pressure to see how that drops. So again, I started out at about 245 to 246. 
by the time he kicked on there and that arc welder was warming up at 8 amps, it dropped down to 243. When he started kicking on pressure, then we started to see how this changed. And I'll show you this in a second. So what we had is just a, a plug right here. It's a 50 amp plug. Typical for an RV hookup as well. Three wire. Again, this is an SO cord, number 10-3. Just a half inch piece of Carflex. This is THWN-2, number six copper. Coming onto a 60 amp breaker. Again, the breaker could be rated probably up to almost 70 amps if I wanted to, if I was in the 90 degrees Celsius column, but the weakest link is this breaker at 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the thing that's going to pop later is this, most, de most definitely. As he welded, I also was checking with the thermal gun with a Fluke 3, was it T, VTO2. Basically, this was about $700, $150, Just checking temperature right here. The warmest this got was 80 degrees. The rest of these were at 62. Okay, so it didn't get too bad, but that was also after 12 different strikes of welding. Okay, we ran our cord out. It's extra hard duty, so however his house looks is up to him. Oh, I know we're not supposed to go through a threshold of a door, but neither is this plug rated for outside, so he knows to roll this up every night. Besides the fact he doesn't want it ripped off, and he's going to put it in there. Okay, so coming in here, this is how the code of Article 240.4G you finally get to see this in the field because you see all these stupid formulas in the book and all these codes, but none of it makes a damn bit of sense some days. But this wire is actually 12 gauge number three and it says it on it. Okay, you're not going to be able to see it too well, but I, I read it 300 volt max, number 12 three, excuse me, yeah, number 12 three, and it's a type SPT. So it's basically rated for a pretty hard duty. We use just another plug over here, the same size as the other one over there, 1110. This is not outdoor rated. It's a NEMA 50 amp, NEMA 6, but it is good for a dry location. Outside in the damp area is not or wet, but again, he's going to roll that at night. Sorry about the weed eater. Hey, I'll go turn the off. Yeah, would you? Just for a few seconds. So right here, is his welding chart okay he is using an 8 gauge 3.2 rod and on this rod he's also looking at what type of metal but he's using a Lincoln let's look at that it's a Lincoln arc welder and it's up to 225 amps of arc welding okay down here is its listing of 230 volt 50 amp 60 Hertz Here's your 1i and your 1u rating that you were talking about in 630.12. This is your x factor. So I'm going to do this formula. Here's your on button and off. Here's your two leads, negative, positive. Pretty simple. This was at Home Depot for 300 bucks, I think he said. Thing about it that he didn't like, he's a master welder of 40 years. He says this, this floating in here really sucks. He says he wants to be right at 110. It only gave us at 90, 105, and 120. Here's what I found. I know this video is a little long, and I'm sorry, but if you don't like the video, turn it off. If you do, you'll learn a lot from this. Um, he typically wants to weld between 90 to 135. But he usually uses not an eighth inch rod on this steel. He uses a 332nd. And the smaller the rod, I'm probably not...